All right, let's get started, everyone. Welcome to Advising 101. My name is Jamie Zami, and I'm the Senior Director of Student Success and Advising here at Sonoma State University. Hope you've had a fantastic day today at our virtual, C or, uh, virtual decision day. Um, we are really excited to have you had the opportunity to talk to President Sakaki, your dean, some of the other services on campus, and this is it. This this is the last uh, breakout session for the day. So we're gonna be going over Advising 101 here at Sonoma State University. I'm joined by two of my colleagues who I'll turn it over to introduce themselves. We've got about a 10 to 12 minute presentation and then we're gonna open it up for any questions that you might have for any of us. So I'm gonna turn this over to Erica. Hello you all, my name is Erica Blatt. I am the Transfer Advisor in the Advising and Transfer Center. Um, so what that means is that I work with students um, who are incoming transfer students and our current transfer students at Sonoma State. And I look forward to also introducing you all later to the rest of our staff as well. But welcome to Sea with Decision Day virtually. I'm glad that you all have taken the time to just um, spend the Saturday with us and then the wanting to learn more about advising here at Sonoma State. So I look forward to giving you all the presentation alongside with Jamie and Michael, as well as answering any questions that you all may have. Perfect, thank you, Erica. Michael. And it looks like Michael had popped off real quick. So we will still get started. Let me share my screen real quick with y'all. All right, so we wanted to talk a little bit about this transition from high school to college and talk a little bit about some of the differences that you might uh, have seen with your guidance counselor at your high school to what you're going to expect from your professional academic advisor here at Sonoma State University. So your guidance counselors that you've been working with for the past four years really focused with you on classes. They did a lot of communicating with your family, with yourself, checking in. They did a lot of talking with you about your next steps. So where were you going to go to college? Were you going to volunteer? Were you going to join the military? All the different, or were you going to look for employment? So those different post high school options you had. They monitor your progress, uh, see how you're doing with your grades. They checked in if you were absent to a certain amount of times, if you were late, and then they were there just to provide just general, very broad support. And so if you go and you hear about friends who maybe go to a community college, you're also gonna hear the word counselor, which is very more similar, much similar to what you'd see from a high school guidance counselor. However, at Sonoma State University, we have a professional academic advisors like Erica, um, the big things that they're going to do here is that they're, they're not going to really tell you what to do. They are going to make recommendations and they're going to advise you. But as a college student now, you, you are the one who are going to make the decisions that you think is best for you. So you're going to have an open conversation. You're going to have a, a partnership to make sure that you're taking the courses that you're passionate about that lead you to your post-college graduate outcomes that you want. Um, this is driven by the students. So uh, your guidance counselors in high schools were driven by the guidance counselor, but now that, again, you're a college student, we want you to take the driver's seat on this one and really lead that. And, real, and the last thing that we really focus on is some specialized support. And so you'll hear the words referral, you'll hear the words alerts, you'll hear the words campus partners. Our advisors like Erica really know how to connect you to the different resources on campus so that you're getting extra assistance that you're finding clubs and organizations that you're excited about and that you're they're here to just make sure that all these different things that are happening on campus you understand and so that's kind of the difference that you're going to see now we want you to take the driver's seat with your advising and and your academic uh journey here and so we have a couple different ways that we advise here at sonoma state so i'm gonna turn it over to erica to talk a little bit about that Yeah, thank you, Jamie. So um, I think what's really important for students to understand is that even though these are three different um, circles that you see, they're all intertwined together in terms of helping you out. Um, yes, I'm going to talk about that right now, Teresa. Thank you, great question. Um, so let me just get right into it then. So we have our faculty advisors who are also known as major advisors. So in my undergrad experience, Erica was a sociology major. And let's say this is Erica's first quarter or semester at the university and I wanna know how can I navigate and know what classes I need to be academically successful at my institution. 
so I could go to my faculty advisor where they can give me more in-depth information about what it looks like navigating through that specific major. And just going beyond what it takes to like do well within like the courses, but just what courses are best to complement each other and take them together, right? So should I do like an introduction class and a research method class in my same first semester? And so that is where the faculty advisor really comes in to give you very in-depth knowledge on what course content looks like within that major. They're very helpful and useful as well for a holistic standpoint and connecting you with internships also and talking to you about well this was my career pursuit to where I am today I have other friends and colleagues within this who majored in this who are doing um, different career alternatives as well so I will look at the faculty advisor as someone has un helped me understand the course curriculum and the course content of my class and then also how can I maximize my degree in real world situations as well so that's where the faculty advisor is really important in coming in and explaining that. Me, I'm a professional academic advisor. Kind of rippling off what Jamie said, I am not necessarily going to tell you exactly what to do. However, what's important is that as a professional academic advisor that I'm giving you that guidance of what needs to be completed. But you have that autonomy to actually make the decision on how you want to see your educational plan for that semester. Um, there are also different professional academic advisors that specialize in certain areas. So I specialize with transfer students. We have other um, academic advisors who specialize in working with undeclared students, so students who have not declared a major. We have academic advisors who specialize working closely with students in specific social science majors, such as, but not limited to, women and gender studies, psychology, human development, political science, and the list goes on. And then we also have uh, academic advisors who work closely with our STEM. So, uh, chemistry, bio, bio, uh, biotech, um, and then also our nursing students as well. And then we also have professional academic advisors who cater to specific populations. So military connected students, uh, students within um, here we have an uh, EOP, Educational Opportunity Program, students within Pertha, which is for our Latinx students who want to go into teaching. So those are the professional academic advisors in that they are not replacing faculty advisors. However, they are an extension to have conversations in terms of general education, and what that looks like for students, as well as guiding you to the appropriate faculty advisor as needed, guiding you to petitions and forms that may need to be completed and helping you explain that information. And then campus partners is kind of just touching on the different resources that we have available. So for instance, we have like our TRIO program who works closely with students who need math and science, as well as like the Dream Center and staff also. And there are other campus partners as well. Yeah, um, can everyone hear me okay? Jamie, Erica, perfect. Uh, the router crashed for me as I was hosting. Uh, so that's fun. Welcome to um, remote world. Um, so <clears throat> Erica jumped into this. This is kind of that same um, little Venn diagram you saw. It just kind of talks about the differences in what faculty advisors do and what professional advisors do. Um, one of the first screens um, that Jamie shared with you was that broad support um, that happens in high school versus very specialized network of support. So you can see here that even though there's faculty advisors and there's professional academic advisors, what they do and the support that they can provide to students is very different. So uh, bottom left for me is the professional academic advisor. That's GE um, uh, educa or general education advising. That's understanding the e-advising tools that are available to people, um, helping students uh, explore majors changing majors, um, picking up a minor, picking up a second major. Um, how do I connect this coursework in my major to this career I want to do? Or are there different pathways to get to the career I want to do? Um, how can I get connected to campus? Uh, what are some of the resources that can help support me? Either um, support me with writing, support me with math tutoring, tutoring in chemistry. Um, the list goes on and on. On the faculty side, that's in the top. Um, it's really Understanding the curriculum, right? I want to be a biology major. I want to specialize in either zoology or uh, microbiology. What's the difference? What are the different um, majors that they can leave or uh, uh, pathways that they can take me for careers? Uh, how do I get to a graduate school if I want to go um, on to graduate school and be a physical therapist? Uh, what does that look like? Uh, what are the research opportunities? Uh, so faculty are really diving into the curriculum, the courses that you're going to be taking, uh, what the different courses, uh, the learning outcomes are going to be for those. Um, and they really focus on that upper division. So that, you know, junior and senior year, usually that year three and four, um, where many of the professional advisors are focusing on um, 
your first couple of years at the university, whether that's the lower division, year one and year two, or if it's a transfer advisor, maybe that first year. It's, it's transitional content helping you acclimate to um, university and the differences that university are. Um, and then campus partners, that kind of one on the right, I mean, the list is endless. We have so many campus partners. You may have heard about many of them today. Uh, I won't you know, list off all of them right now, and perhaps if you have questions, we can jump into them in the questions. So this, this Venn diagram does seem kind of complicated, like, oh, do I go here or here to get questions answered? It, it's really not. Really, what we're trying to show is that you have a team of advisors here at Sonoma State University. So when you get here in the fall, you're, even over the summer, when you meet your new advisors at Noma Nation Orientation, you're going to create that relationship with the, your advisors. You're going to know the two folks who are going to be working with you, and they're here to support you all steps along the way. So while it might look a little bit scary and a little bit big, trust us, it's really quite simple once you, we get here and you meet your advisors. Erica, a couple minutes ago go mention the word holistic. There's two words that we use here at Sonoma State University to describe advising, holistic and proactive. So what we're looking at here is a, is a visual representation of a holistic advising. Basically what our advisors are going to do is they want to know what's happening in your life. There's a lot of things happening when you transition from high school or community college to a four-year college. You're moving away from home. You're moving away from friends. Um, you might be looking now for a job at, you, where you didn't have a before or a different job. Um, you might have medications that you need to get up here. There might be things that are, a lot of things that are going on. All of those things not only affect you as a person, but affect your academics. And we want to make sure that we're here to help and support all these different areas. So when you meet with your advisors, they're going to ask you, you know, how's your living situation? How are your roommates? Are you working? Do you have enough food? They're going to talk to you about what do you, even as a first year student, they're going to start asking you about what, what do you plan to do when you leave here in four years? Um, because we want to start knowing how we can build goals, relationships, and support systems for all of you. So it's going to be a well-rounded, very diverse conversations that you'll be having with your advisors because they also are the ones that, they're also going to be the point people to help you get things that you need. So if you have questions about scholarships, if you have questions about financial aid, they're going to be the point person to help get you to the right person to talk to. If you're struggling with math right away, they're the people who are going to help get you to the tutoring that you might need. So they, they want to know a lot that's going on in your life. And so we say that's holistic. So we do a holistic advising here. And this is kind of how we do it. So like I said before, you're going to create relationships. You're going to hear from your professional academic advisor in June. Um, and they're going to be welcoming you because you're going to be meeting them at, at, with them at Noma Nation Orientation this summer. Uh, so they're going to start that relationship because that building that relationship is a key part of the holistic experience of advising. We want to know what your goals are. What are your short-term goals for a semester, for an academic year? And what are your long-term goals? What do you want to do when you graduate from Sonoma State? Do you want to go volunteer somewhere? Do you want to go into grad school? Do you want to begin a career, not a job? Let's start looking at what those goals are and let's build off of those. And then let's watch you persist through these different short-term and long-term goals. We want to see you continue to make progress to graduate on time. They're going to help with motivation because guess what? There's going to be some classes you're just not that excited about. There's plenty of classes that I wasn't very excited about, but one of the great things about Sonoma State is we are the only liberal public liberal arts school in the state of California. That's a really big deal, especially right now in this new remote world that we're living in and what the new normal is going to look like because a liberal arts education is going to give you these soft skills or the career competencies that a lot of employers are looking for right now. They're looking for critical thinking. They're looking for how to use technology. They're looking for uh, oral and written communication. These are all things that are covered in a liberal arts school. So we will be helping you look for motivation. As Michael likes to say, the silver lining in what we're doing and what we're learning as well. Well. And so we're going to be building upon that. Um, we're going to be strategizing. Things are going to be changing. You know, every semester, every, things are going to be different for you as you persist through. Um, what you're focused on is going to change. So we want to help you strategize what these next steps along the way are. So what are you all going to get out of advising? Besides getting the class, besides working with advisors to figure out your, your uh, academic journey and your roadmap and the classes you need, you're going to gain knowledge. Um, there's a whole hidden curriculum of higher education that our advisors are going to help teach you on. How are you going to pay for it? How are we going to support um, uh, paying for, for college? How are we going to pay for our day-to-day -day living? What are these goals? We're going to learn skills. 
that we talked about just a minute ago, these career competencies and soft skills that are even more important now for employers that you'll be able to, to showcase when you're graduating. And changing attitudes. Um, you're gonna learn grit, resiliency, you're gonna learn openness. If you're someone who doesn't really like to ask for help, that's the best way we can get, navigate higher education and Sonoma State. So you're gonna learn to ask for help and see how actually easy it is to make connections with things. And so the idea is after you've gained these skills, attitudes and knowledge, you're gonna feel that you belong. You're gonna feel that Sonoma State is your second home and that you are ready for that long-term goal. Erica, tell us a little bit about our team of advisors. Yes, yeah, so I kind of briefly talked about this a little bit. Um, so I'll start off from, I know my left from right, I promise. So the very first picture, which is probably all of our lefts. Um, so that's Kayla Shivers, who works closely with our military connected students with all things like uh, military connected besides not besides financial aid. Um, and then we have Vanessa Basharini, who works closely with our undeclared students. Okay, um, now I'm actually, I may not get into the specifics for what we do. Um, then we have Alia, myself, and then we have Michael, who's here with us today. Hi, Michael. Then we have Angelica, Priscilla, who is the, the heartbeat of our, the Advising and Transfer Center. Without Priscilla, um, I would not be here. <laughs> um, and then we have Jamie as well. And then we have Mendel, Marissa, Alvin, Christina, Derek, and Natalie. Um, as a team together within the Advising and Transfer Center, we are the professional academic advisors that specialize in different areas and helping our students. There will be times, however, where there's like just a lot going on, what we refer to as like peak advising, where we need like a lot of assistance, where we are more than just helping our specialized area, but we're really big on just making sure that students need the assistance in that moment. So if you ever come into my office or email me, and you happen to say, oh, I'm not a transfer student, um, I will still make sure to assist you as much as I can. And I think that is the, the responsibility. And that is a task that we're all charged with within the advising and transfer center is we're student first and student focused. Um, and we just wanna make sure that you all have the best resources that you need to be successful here at Sonoma State. So these are our lovely faces. Um, we are located in the library on the first floor. Uh, and right when you walk through those doors, you will see us. We're at the very, very bottom of the, the library. But it's still, it's still a nice place, though. Um, so this is our lovely team. And we are looking forward to just meeting you all, whether it's virtually, in person, whatever that looks like. Regardless of where we are, you will have the support that you need. Okay, and this is me as well. So the benefits of advising, um, as, as you all can see, I'm not going to read through each bullet point because I know that you all are, well, hopefully you're able to um, read it as well. But um, self-awareness, decision making, that's something that's really big for us as advisors. It's not to make the decision for you on what to take, however, guide you to make sure that you are fulfilling the right areas. Because what's really important to understand is that you will be the one in the classroom having that contact with the professor and your peers around you. And so while we do want to make sure that you are in the right fulfilling the right areas we also want to make sure that you are comfortable in the classes that you're choosing to take right um, higher gpas is that because we are having these conversations with you going through course curriculum and looking at what's required for you for that course you will have a better understanding of what you're getting yourself into before you enroll in that class so it's not a prescriptive way of me just saying hey take political science 100 but it's saying hey if you're considering taking these other classes what does it look like also taking political science 200 is this of interest to you um, on time graduation, making sure that we catch any units deficiencies and all of that other um, important information as well to make sure that you are not going to be caught, uh, caught up in trying to be in decline for graduation or anything of that sort. Uh, point of support and soundboarding, building community for your campus. We have a lot of different professional academic advisors that come in and work with a lot of different populations. So you can imagine there's a lot of the students in our waiting room just coming in for different um, concerns and just you never know, you may catch uh, a friend work, waiting on an advisor in the, um, the waiting room connecting to campus partners in some way everyone within the professional academic advisor specifically the advising and transfer center is connected to a campus partner or a campus committee that is talking about the improvements of making this issue better for you all as students so in that way we're definitely connectful and resourceful to the campus at large and that we are more than advisors but we're constantly working on wide collaborations to make SSU a better and equitable equitable place for our students and then also within um, 
the student advising and success model, we have the career center that works closely along with us. So Jamie is also another one of many heartbeats in making sure the career center is really close to building that pathway um, from, uh, from school to careers or graduate school and all that great stuff. So that's the benefits of advising. Something that Michael uh, always tell us is seek advising early and often. Yep. Thank you, Erica. Um, how we connect, maybe not need to know right now. Um, we will share this with you a million times. I just really want this slide to be up so that you know there's a bunch of different ways for students to reach us and for us to outreach to students. Uh, right now, you see we have asterisks on our in-person because we all find ourselves, uh, or most of us, in this remote setting. Um, and so right now, we're really doing a lot of this, a lot of drop-ins and a lot of appointments, a lot of FaceTime, a lot of Zoom, um, a lot of Google Hangouts, just any way that uh, we can be accessible to students and students can be um, accessible to us. Besides our fantastic group of advisors, we also use a lot of technology here to help with our advising. So um, you can see the two cute little Seawolves, uh, Lobo Connect and Seawolf Chat. These are ways that you will be able to interact with advisors and different resources on campus. Lobo Connect will be a mobile app for y'all that you'll be able to download at Nomination Orientation this summer, which is gonna be our virtual orientation. And then Seawolf Chat is our um, AI chatbot. And so that uh, utilizes some AI that you'll be able to text and get questions answered 24 um, seven. Fantastic uh, set of fantastic uh, tools there. College Scheduler and Degree Planner, just a couple other tools that we utilize here. We're not gonna talk about those now. You're gonna get a huge introduction at nomination orientation. Yeah, and same thing with this is just in the interest of time. I mean, if you have questions about them, I'm happy to answer them. But uh, one of the things there, 15 to finish with the cute little hat, bell, and uh, piggy bank, um, is just talking about the benefits of staying on track and on time um, for a four year or two year graduation, depending on what, if you're coming in as a first time first year student or as a transfer student. So it's a big initiative um, at our campus to just make sure students are getting out um, on the timeline that they would like to set for themselves. And the one on the other side is the California State University California Promise Program. Uh, this was from uh, the state legislator, a Senate bill that allows um, certain particular groups of students in particular majors to have a guarantee from the university that they can graduate on time. Um, and they get very specific and tailored support to help them do that. Um, and it's a great program. Happy to answer any questions about it um, after this. Perfect. So we want to thank you all for listening to us a little bit about what advising looks like here at Sonoma State University. Um, again, it's very different than probably what you've seen with your guidance counselor in high school. And we just wanted to give you a sneak peek of what you can expect. So the next steps are you're going to hear from your professional academic advisor. Uh, like I said, just you'll hear about in mid early to mid June, welcoming you making that first connection because then they'll be working with you during this summer during nomination orientation, which you've heard me say multiple times. I did see a question come up in chat a little bit ago. It, orientation this summer is 100% virtual. And so you'll be hearing from our orientation coordinator very soon if you have not yet already. But with that, I'm gonna shut that down and open this up for any questions folks might have. Jamie, can we, I wanna try to keep it into the, the ones that have been asked in the chat. So you asked, you answered the one for Adam about uh, orientation being online this summer. Um, I think that's very much connected to uh, something that Nathan and Isabella asked, uh, which is, do you have an idea of what the orientation schedule is gonna look like? And then um, since we don't quite know what the fall looks like yet, um, will we be hearing from advisors? Uh, will advisors be reaching out to students in the summer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. great question. So let's start with that last one. Uh, like I said, they, you'll be hearing from your advisors probably early to mid-June. The reason is that's when uh, the deposits are due and that's when we'll be able to then start putting students into the different caseloads of our advisors. So you will have a specific advisor that you will know their name, like Erica, who you'll see, who you'll be talking to. So they'll be creating, starting to reach out by email to your SSU email and perhaps by text message um, in June. And then the summer orientation, we're still finalizing what that's gonna look like, but there's gonna be short little um, modules that'll happen every couple weeks throughout the summer because there's gonna be different types of information that's gonna be important at different times. Um, you'll probably most likely be registering for your classes in mid to, or early to mid July, and you'll be working really closely with your academic advisors at that point as well. Yeah, great, thank you, Jamie. Um, 
So uh, I think, you know, Dylan had a question about um, whether or not folks would be guaranteed to be able to move in in the fall. And uh, Dylan, if you're on, maybe you can clarify if you're asking about um, being having access to uh, residential housing, so the dorms, um, or if you're thinking about whether or not classes are going to be in person or virtual. So Jamie, maybe take a stab at, at both of those. Yeah, so that, that's still up in the air. Uh, great question. I know this is on a lot of people's minds right now. We're still trying to folk, figure out what the fall is going to look like. Um, it's, it's coming quick. It feels like it's, it's still a ways away, but we are looking uh, to hopefully have a decision by mid-May on what that's going to look like. Um, it's it's going to be one of three things, right? It's either going to be fully back to normal, which is possible, but we're not quite sure. It's a hybrid model where perhaps we start in a virtual and come back at some point in the semester, or it would be a completely virtual. Um, most likely it's one of the first two, but I can't say about which one, and that would be for both classes and housing. Um, and so there are, because there's a few other things that are happening over the summer with that as well. Great. Um, yeah, somebody asked, uh, do athletics have their own academic advisor? They absolutely do. Uh, name's Mendel Murray, fantastic. Um, supports all student athletes. Um, I think Ellen asked, what's the average ratio of advisor to student at Sonoma State? It's a really good question. It ranges depending on the population of students and the needs. Um, we have some advisors right now that are below 100 to 1 for students. Um, and then we have some advisors uh, where the need is a bit different for their students and it's closer to about 300 to 1 for students. Either way, we are, um, I don't know if you've uh, looking at ratios across the nation, but we are well below uh, the national ratio as well as the average within the CSU. So we are doing very well with um, our academic advisors. Um, another question, a lot of folks have asked about switching majors. You absolutely can switch majors depending on the major. Sometimes you can do that as early as now if the major isn't impacted. If you're trying to switch into an impacted major, then whether or not you can do that on the timeline on you can do that is um, more dependent on what you're trying to switch into. So someone asked about nursing. Um, so perhaps if you want to stay on a little bit later, I can try to target, give you an answer to that one. Um, let me see what else we have here. Uh, this is a good question, Jamie. Uh, if students, um, let's say the fall is completely virtual and students are taking courses online, does the cost of attendance change um, or housing deposits refunded if someone has paid for living on campus? Yeah, really good question. Um, the tuition won't change because uh, that's based on the courses and the instructors. However, other fees will most likely change. So uh, refunds would happen for housing if we're unable to move on, prorated based on quarters, the times that we weren't able to utilize that. But there would absolutely be some type of refund or changes to the student fees that we have. Great. Uh, Justin asked, uh, do you choose your own advisor or does your advisor choose you or is assigned to you? Um, and are there specific advisors for departments? And the answer is kind of yes to all of those. Um, when students come in, they are assigned generally two people, a professional academic advisor and a faculty advisor within their major. Um, sometimes there are additional faculty that could get assigned if the student wants to work with somebody else, maybe in a different uh, research area or concentration. Um, and then faculty or uh, professional advisors, um, you know, we have multiple professional advisors in some of our populations. And so there is a possibility to to work with someone that um, either you have a relationship with, you met at orientation, um, or just maybe like has a focus that you're really interested in. Um, let's see what else here. I'll try to get as many of these as possible. Uh, this was a question, is there extra support like tutorial center for students who may need extra guidance? Um, absolutely. That's one of our Venn diagram. That's one of our campus partners. Um, it's called LARC. We love acronyms. It stands for Learning and Academic Resource Center. And in LARC, they do um, tutoring for many courses. Um, they do writing center help where you can bring in an assignment, talk about what the, the prompt is, um, review what you've done, um, look at your transitions and your paragraphs. They can help you with anything uh, before you submit work or even after you've gotten it back from an instructor and they've given you some feedback. The Writing Center can help you kind of work through that feedback and understand what the instructor wants if you need to make revisions. Um, what else, Jamie and Erica, do we have in terms of uh, like tutorial support? I, I, there's a lot of different stuff out there. I'm thinking like Mesa um, for students that are in STEM. Um, I'm thinking some of the different computer labs if you're a part of CASE. What else is out there? Yeah, Econ has uh, tutoring for Econ 204, 205. Uh, departments have tutoring. 
Michael mentioned uh, Mesa, which is a fantastic organization, supplemental instruction. So a lot of our classes will, ha will have a, a, like, a t like a peer tutor or peer teacher attached to it, where you get to meet with them outside of classroom hours to help with the content, especially more difficult things like that. Um, lots of, and this is where you would come and meet with Erica or whoever your advisor is, because then they would help provide referrals to these different departments. Uh, Jamie, someone in the chat asked about um, jobs. Uh, are you able to get a job on campus? Could you possibly get a job at Lark? Um, and then uh, Erica, maybe after that, you can take um, double majors and how that looks like. Uh, if students want a double major or get a minor. Yeah, so Lark is, is fully peer tutor uh, hire. So if there are classes that you become an expert in and get like an A or B in, these are this is a great opportunity to not only uh, work and on campus, which is a huge benefit, but also help support other Seawolves who might be struggling with certain classes. So they always say that the best way to see if you understand content is to be able to teach it. So if you're teaching this content over and over, you'll become an expert in it. So that's a great one. Student success and advising, our area where we all work in, um, always is hiring lots of peer mentors, student assistants, peer advisors. There's lots of opportunities, both on campus and in a remote setting for uh, work for students at Sonoma State University. Erica, made double uh, double majors, minors? Yeah, and I made sure, and I also made sure to put the answer in the chat too as well. Um, so the process is very similar to what Michael explained in terms of changing your major. It's the same, it's very similar in terms of adding a major. Unless the major is impacted, you can definitely be able to add the major as, as early as you want to. However, um, as I also put in the chat as well, an impacted major just means that that's a major that's heavily applied to. So there's additional criteria that has to be met in order to get into that major. So let's say I'm a history major and I want to double major as psychology, I'm a double major. Psychology is an impacted major. So there, well, for transfer students at least. So I'm also speaking from a transfer student lens. So there's additional criteria that student may have to meet in order to get into the psychology major. So yes, it's possible for you to add a major and double major. Um, there's a form that you will fill out and we will make sure that all of that information gets out to you all as well. And I'm also gonna put in the chat as well, just a direct link to our list of um, uh, majors that we have at Sonoma State. So I encourage you all to actually go and click on the major that you're gonna pursue and look through the website uh, because on there you will find information about their advisors within that department and degree requirements as well. Yeah, excellent, uh, thank you. I just want to take a quick second to just acknowledge that we are at time um, so that you don't feel like you need to stay on. If you want to stay on, uh, we'll continue to answer questions um, for a little bit. Um, you'll have us for a while. Um, diving into some of these quick ones, I, I like to take the easy ones, why not? Um, what is directed self-placement? Uh, it's a great question. Directed self-placement is a way that students can select which first year writing composition course they think is going to be best for them. So the university has a recommendation um, based on your um, either your test scores or your high school grades or your high school GPA and all that kind of goes into a equation. It gives students an idea of their placement um, for English and math, but direct self placement, at least for English, allows students to actually pick. Um, so perhaps you took a course your senior year of high school and you didn't do great in it, but it was because you weren't a great test taker or um, Something else happened uh, in your life, like maybe there was this weird pandemic that uh, impacted all of us, and you think maybe it wasn't uh, indicative of how you would actually do in a college composition course, you can, you can decide where you think you're going to be best. Um, somebody asked about, can a high school course meet a college prereq, um, prereq being a prerequisite? And the answer to that is it depends. Um, a lot of times with math and English, what you take in high school um, will give you access to different things at the college level just because they kind of go together. Um, that isn't to say that high school calculus and college calculus are the same, and so taking high school calculus wouldn't give you access to calculus two in college, um, but it might give you access to some courses um, on that direction. Um, Jamie, somebody asked about EOP and whether or not it was a point of entry program, and then the second one I'll throw at you uh, was someone who hasn't visited the campus yet? And is the campus open currently for tours if they were to drive up? Yeah, great questions. Uh, starting with the tours, the tours are unfortunately closed at this time. The university has uh, turned over a lot of our operations to the public health to support um, COVID-19 operations. So most of the campus is shut down except for two essential 
uh, personnel right now. And so unfortunately there are no tours there. If you go online, there are a couple of virtual tours through some YouTube videos that you can check out right now. Um, but as soon as the campus reopens, you all hear about it. You all hear about opportunities to be able to get on campus and see what things are looking like. Um, and I also put the outreach at Sonoma at EDU um, as a, another way to have just some form of like communication with someone um, just in case for campus tours and what that will look like and stuff. Perfect. And then EOP, EOP is a, uh, it's a, it's a fully academic and, and social support program at Sonoma State University to help first generation historically low income students. So that would be a separate application um, within Cal State Apply that you would have filled out if you were uh, trying to get into EOP. It has its, when Michael was talking about caseloads for advisors at around 90, those are our EOP students. They get enhanced uh, advising as in smaller caseloads of about 90 to 100 to one. They work with the same academic advisors for four years to help with all different things. Um, so it's a, it's a different program that uh, allows additional services for our students. I also put into the chat, there is going to be a one credit math class this summer fully online. It's very similar to DSP in that if you feel that perhaps um, you were put into a stretch math class, which is a year long math class, but you think that maybe your, your scores or your tests don't indicate that you should be in a one semester class, you could take this one unit class online this summer. And then if you pass the class, you'd automatically get put into a one semester math class instead of a two semester math class. So it's another way to, to look at what courses that you've been taking and ways that you can um, expedite maybe some of your, the courses that you need to, in order for requirements to graduate and stay on track to graduate on time. Awesome, thank you. Uh, I think I can get through a couple of these quick ones um, if you're waiting around to hear yours. If you're an incoming transfer student and you are a tutor at maybe your community college and you wanna come in and also tutor those courses here at Sonoma State, do you have to retake those courses? The answer is no. Um, you would get uh, credit for having taken the courses and tutored the courses at the junior college that should give you access here to apply as a tutor. Um, will kinesiology still be impacted? Kinesiology is one of our majors. It's one of our uh, 14 impacted majors. It will likely still be impacted into the future. It's one of our um, more popular majors here at the university. It's also one of our smaller majors. Um, and so there is a, 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 a high interest in that for a lot of students. Um, are music classes impacted? Great question. Music is not one of our impacted majors. Um, and so that program is not uh, impacted. And so the classes, um, students are able to get those when they're in the majors. There's also um, access to the courses if you're trying to get a minor in music. Um, and then there's some other uh, private instruction if you'd want to continue um, some of your studies there. Um, but no, it's not impacted there. Um, let's see. Let's see. Good question. If you pass a math class at a local community college, will your credits transfer? This is a great question. Um, yeah. I think, Erica, you should take this one. <laughs> yeah, so I made sure to put in the chat as well that assist.org is a very helpful website so that you can see specifically what you took at that um, community college and will it transfer to Sonoma State. Not trying to go into the weeds of things um, directly, but um, there, I know there are two general education sheets that exist at community colleges, the IGETSI and the CSU general education sheet as well. Any classes listed in area two for math on the IGETSI or area B4 for the CSU sheet, if that class exists in that realm, that area, it is transferable to Sonoma State. That is all the general education classes that will come over to SSU and they will transfer over. Um, but assist.org, once again, is also a helpful website as well. You choose your institution to Sonoma State and then you can go to like mathematics and look up that class and it will let you know as well. Um, are there any other digital GE summer courses um, that we might be able to take um, and do you assist with job placement before graduation? Jamie, maybe you can take a couple of those while I start to respond to some of these in the chat. Sure. Um, so yeah, there will be uh, courses available um, through, we call summer intercession here at Sonoma State that you'd be able to start taking those ahead. So you can look up summer intercession Sonoma State uh, University and see what courses are available for that. Um, Eric, you wanna talk about using GE, taking GE courses at a local community college? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, I encourage you all, and, and I know it's different for uh, every student, right? So my, for, for my transfer students, um, I'm very mindful with the GE talk because, you know, there's a maximum of 70 units, semester units, or 105 quarter units that will come in from your community college, right? So just being mindful with the number of units that you're taking um, and having that come into no mistake. For my first year students who are coming in, and there are some classes you are thinking about being a sociology major, and let me just do my intro to sociology um, at community college you're more than welcome to do that and get them transferred over to sonoma state um and then the way that you would do that to get that credit is just make sure you submit documentation through the admissions and records at that community college to be transferred over to sonoma state um so that you can get that credit but you're more than welcome to but i just want you all to know that the maximum amount of units from a community college is 70 and if the if it's on a quarter system which um i believe like dan's as a quarter system school it will be 105 units um, so yeah, you can definitely take classes during the summer. I would encourage you all to do that. Um, take the classes during the summer. Um, there it's, yeah, it's more affordable. It's not, it does not cost as much and it's just really helpful to kind of like knock things out and stuff so that when you do come back and start, you're good to go to really focus on major classes. Yes, you can, uh, just, you can, you're able to switch majors. Yeah. Switch majors is definitely possible. Um, unless the major is impacted, which means a very popular major that's being applied to, you want to make sure you have all the, the additional criteria met, but you can definitely switch majors, majors and looking more into that. Um, I think June asked summer intercession, uh, winter intercession. We do have, um, these kind of non-traditional terms that happen in the summer and winter students are able to take courses there. We offer online courses, in-person courses. It's a great way to catch up. It's a great way to take something that maybe you couldn't get during the regular academic year. It's also a great way to take courses. Like if you're, let's say you're from Southern California and you're not going to be living in Sonoma County after your first or second year, you could always go back to Southern California, take a summer course at a junior college um, and have that transfer back to Sonoma. It's a great way um, to kind of stay ahead. I want to go to this question that I love uh, and I kind of want to see what my colleagues here answer. So Isabella said, what is something that a lot of incoming freshmen don't know going into college in regards to um, counseling or advising that people should do? Erica mentioned it early and we say it a lot. Get advised early and often. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you don't meet, wait to see your advisor and this is traditional until it's time to register for the next se semester. And you're like, oh, I got to talk to my advisor. However, that's usually seven, eight, nine weeks into the semester, and a lot has happened. Um, the, how we were motivated, what's changed, things in our lives are different. So you want to meet with them early. And so you want to set up an appointment with Erica or one of our other advisors within the first couple of weeks of being here. Um, you want to establish that relationship with them because when things come up, um, your name will pop up. It'll be like, because we get information all the time. We get information about internships. We get information about scholarships. We get information about all these things. And I'm going to look at June because I see June right in the center of my face. And if I remember June, oh, June was in here a couple days ago talking about a scholarship. Yeah, I'm going to make sure it gets to him. So you want to make sure that you're always connecting with your advisor because they are a point person for your time here. Yeah, and I think another thing that's important for me too, um, when I typically talk to like um, students, is that when it comes to creating your educational plan, something that really is important for me as an advisor is when a student, when we're creating this plan together is I'm making sure that you have fulfilled the areas, but you get to choose what is going to actually fill that area. Um, and another thing that's really important too, um, is that it's really important to make sure that you it's great to take advice from your friends, but when it comes to very specific deadlines, petitions, and even what class to take, please, please, please follow up with an advisor. It's not to say that your friends are not helpful uh, resources as well, because they've probably taken the class previously, but we all have different learning modalities, and that the way that we approach learning, the way that we approach classrooms is very different. So I think having that great conversation with an advisor, like that's what we've been trained to do. And so please, please follow up with an advisor with an advisor, um, because that's really important um, to do that. And just making sure that whenever you create that plan, include GEs, include major classes, and working from there. I'm also going to, if you all don't mind, Jamie and Michael, drop the GE pattern. Is that okay or no? Sure. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll give my quick answer to that question, which is, um, you, you probably haven't had this at your, uh, either your high school or your junior college, where you've had someone that is like your advocate for you. Um, and will help you learn how to advocate for yourself. And so I think that's, for me, like the one thing that um, I know me going into college uh, a long, long time ago, 
um, that I didn't know that. I didn't know how to advocate for myself. I didn't know I had somebody that would advocate for me. And I didn't quite realize like how many opportunities there are at campus to possibly explore and get involved in. And like, you can really make your college experience what you want to make it and get out of it what you want to get out of it. Um, and I just think the opportunities are endless. And a lot of times students just don't know about it. So I think, what would I tell somebody? I think it would just be to talk to people and like get involved as much as possible. Try something. If you don't like it, stop doing it. Try something else. And like, that's, if you just go through that and try all these different flavors, you're going to eventually land on uh, an ice cream sundae that you love um, for it's lunchtime. So I'm hungry. Uh, what else do we have in here? Uh, folks are asking about whether or not um, you can choose your own, uh, the country or program for study abroad. And then um, if you have any insight on how you think um, this current situation might impact um, access to study abroad. Yeah, so it's any, you get to choose any country that uh, we have multiple programs for City Abroad. We have a CSU specific called IP. We have, um, we partner with other organizations. And so Australia is one of our choices, but we're all over Europe. You're all over Asia. You're in South Africa. You're in Central and South America. So you get to choose the country you want to go to. You get to choose. Um, the main thing is making sure that the, the country has the program and major courses that you would be taking along the way. And so that's the key part is working with our study away coordinator on that. Um, I think that co the, the nice thing is most folks don't study abroad till their junior or senior year. And so you still all have two to three years, or sorry, their junior, most likely their junior year. So you all have two to three years in order to, uh, to get there. So I think two to three years will be, you know, the world will be back open. I don't think it'll affect any of your, your, uh, ex your experiences like it, like the students that were study abroad right now. Uh, do we have programs like 504? 504, 504 uh, yes. So uh, students uh, would want to work with our Disabilities Services for Students, our DSS program, and uh, they will be able to help set up accommodations that you might need uh, moving forward as well. Um, and then uh, Teresa. Oh, yeah. Teresa, go oh, perfect. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, incoming transfer students, when will, be, when will we be able to start working with an advisor? Um, for, for me and the, the other uh, professional academic advisor who works closely with current transfer students and incoming transfer students. We're working with our transfer students, even if you don't have a set time register for classes, we still want to ensure that you understand how to register, what to register for, and just what all of that process looks like. So um, I can put in my in this email here now uh, for any student, transfer student, or just any student um, who wants to just email me just to kind of like get our advising hours. Is that okay, Jamie, Michael? Absolutely. Okay, okay. Um, you all are more than welcome to email and I'll also send along the Zoom link as well. When you email me, I'll send you the Zoom link as well um, and stuff like that. So if that is, and then we'll talk more in depth about what that looks like. I don't want to speak too soon, but I kind of feel like we might have answered every question so far in the chat. Um, if someone else has a question, throw it in the chat or you can also unmute yourself if you have that ability uh, and ask it for in front of everyone. Hello, my name is Jasmine and I just have a quick question as a transfer student. Is there anything that you would say is top priority for a transfer student to get done uh, that isn't commonly written on the SSU website? I would say uh, for transfer students, and this is something that is kind of like you all will learn about over time, um, but we do have like a graduation writing assessment requirement that's here um, at Sonoma State. And that is just to test our students' English, like our, their writing proficiency, which I can, when you meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, I can talk about the different options. But I would say within your first year, especially for transfer students, um, because the goal is to have you all done within two years, is to get that done within your first year. Um, and then maximizing each semester, focusing on major requirements and remaining university and general education requirements and understanding that. So that is something I would say um, within your first year is doing that right in the requirement. Great. Jamie, do you want to take uh, this one from Nathan about uh, orientation modules um, for online orientation and whether or not it'll just be one meeting or would it be multiple meetings over a week or so? Yeah, great. So you saw the modules, they're, they're open for about a week at a time. And so it's basically one required meeting that takes eh, 20 to 30 minutes to get through the content. Um, so you have any time during that week, you actually have any time during the summer to be able to, to get those done. But we've set them up at different times. In addition, throughout that week that we're open, 
there might be some add-ons that you can do. So if you're really interested in doing a virtual tour, that's an optional add-on. If you want to meet with an orientation leader and the other students that would be kind of in your cohort to start building community and meeting new friends, perhaps meet a roommate or two, these are all additional add-ons that you can do uh, along the way as well. So there will be every module, there's going to be five of them. We'll have about a 20 to 30 minute required section and then just additional add-ons that you feel that you want to go to. What else? Uh, Erica, Jamie, anything else that you feel like um, we either had to skip over in the presentation that we want to revisit um, or any other things that you think students who are kind of deciding uh, whether or not SSU is the place for them or, or how to be ready when they start, um, what would that look like? Um, I, I do want to um, definitely acknowledge that the due to COVID-19, there are a lot of adjustments that are being made, um, and this is not the ideal experience for some um, in terms of like, you know, getting to know SSU campus and where your future home may be for the next two or four or however many years. Um, but what I can assure you is that folks like Jamie and Michael have been on Zoom meetings from like eight to five and sometimes even longer to make sure what is the best way to still ensure that like, that the students still have like a, whatever an incredible experience at Sonoma State, whether it's they're physically on campus or they're looking at um, their other peers and professors via Zoom or FaceTime or something like that. So I just hope that you all know that like, this is not something that Sonoma State is doing um, alone, but this is definitely like a global wide impact that's taking place. Um, and it's, have, it's causing a lot of different changes being made, but that does not take away from the fact that you all education matters. That does not take away from the fact that I have to make sure and step up that I have to make sure I step up and still be a great advisor. And that does not mean that Jamie and Michael have to like, you know, step back in terms of like coming up with innovative ways to still keep you all engaged. So. I'm glad that you all decided to come here today. Um, I'm glad that you all have the the, access, the accessibility to even be able to come on the Zoom right now um, and just be able to hear um, more about Advising 101. Um, seek, seek advising early and often. Please, to transfer students and just other students, if you need to like, you know, get that assistance, please reach out um, to your appropriate advisor or just any advisor for that matter, um, because we do truly care about you all here at SSU. And I'm sure at other universities as well, but this is Sue of Decision Day, so. I'm going to say SSU. <laughs> Jamie, anything else? Any uh, closing no, thoughts? Erica nailed it. I mean, um, our group of advisors truly care about each of the students they work with. Um, the reason why we keep these low caseloads is with the relationships that are built between students and advisors is a, is a key to success. Um, research shows that, data shows that, and so know like i said know who know who your advisor is get to know them early you'll get a lot of opportunities and nomination orientation to meet with them talk with them and start building out what you're planning to do in f four years if you're a first time student or two years if you're a transfer student for when you graduate and for what those next steps in your life are so uh really appreciate everyone being here uh really appreciate you staying longer and asking really good and insightful questions we love this Absolutely. All right. I, we're through the questions. Uh, we've said our closing remarks. Um, I think you uh, know how to. Um, you'll Erica put her information there in the chat. So if you all have any follow up questions, um, you can shoot it there, and we'll start there. And uh, yeah, appreciate everyone joining us today. It was uh, this was this was excellent. This was awesome. First time doing a virtual dual decision day. I'd rather see you all in person and give you that tour, uh, but this is not bad for a second option. So. Um, wishing you all well um, in this uncertain time as well as you can be, and we hope to see as many of you uh, on campus with us in the fall. All right. Take care, everyone. Perfect. Take care.